Hey guys and welcome back to the channel and I hope we're all doing amazing. I hope that everybody is good. So today as you guys saw in the title I'm going to be sharing a story about my experience as a lodge chef as well as a head chef you know at the lodge. So a uh, experience as a head chef at a lodge. I think I should have just said that. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be sharing that experience with you guys. Um, again I think we need to go on this. Those are all based on my experiences. So if there's anybody watching who's had a different experience from me, I'm happy for you. But this is based on my experience, so please do not come at me and be like, how? Oh, and then why are you lying to the people? No, this is what I experienced personally, you know. So before I go on, please do like, comment, subscribe, and share. Tell your friends, tell their friends, tell their friends, tell their families, so that everybody gets on the video the same way that you are on the video. Please get the notification bell on to get notified every single time I post. Please do follow me on my socials in the description box down below. And yeah, if you are not subscribed also, please do the right thing. Please click on the subscription. Um, little red something somewhere here help you do that so that you know you subscribe it doesn't cost anything you know just just do the do the right thing so if you say anyway um yeah let's get into it cool. so i think um i think i was very shocked like i said personally i think i've had a very i've had a weird shift in like my my career has been very very weird you know like it's been quite strange and in it getting strange, hey, I became a head chef very quickly, very quick, quick, fast in a hurry. And I was like, oh, am I ready? I was like, okay, it's in case it didn't. Hmm, okay. Hey, it's a new experience. First of all, I was like, I get to see animals every day. Oop, oop. I was super excited for that. I was like, we don't want to see animals on a daily basis. We just don't want to wake up to the sunshine, like, off the safari. Who doesn't want all of that? So I was like, okay, that's a good selling point. We have sunshine. We have um, animals and we have a head chef position, you know. And I was like, okay, cool, great, amazing. Let's go for it. Less, that little did I know that it was going to be tough times lasting. It was going to be very, very, very difficult. Because it was something that was super, super out of my comfort zone. Working in a hotel and working in a lodge, working in a restaurant, all of that is different. You know, they're different, very, very different experiences. I had moved... I, I was moving from shifts to working the whole day, you know, all the, those kinds of things were like, oh, okay, I thought, but it's not. So that's when I actually learned the responsibility of a chef more than just cooking. So if you're an executive or a head or anything of in a kitchen, you pretty much have to do things like ordering, you have to do stock. Like stock ordering, you have to do stock taking. I mean, every chef has to do stock taking, but I feel like all this is up to you to ensure that everything is kind of in line you know so there were so many of those things that i particularly don't think i was ready for i think on the phone when they're like okay this 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 is like i can do that i can do that i can do that i can do that you know so it was quite like okay wow it was a lot to, to take in but i was like i'm ready for the challenge i'm learning something new i'm actually very grateful for that because it's like okay i'm not only cooking i'm learning what it's like to be so it's like a wholesome chef already i can do pastry i can do hot kitchen but now i can actually do things like stock ordering and all of that kind of stuff because that's a very big responsibility in the kitchen you need to ensure that you always have stock so if i flop and i don't get something the whole kitchen suffers so it was like a great deal of responsibility that like i said i don't know if i was particularly ready for at the time or i don't know it was really like a lot but i felt like oh listen i can do it and for sure i could do it you know so a day for me at the lodge would be me waking up at around half past five six depended if i was very tired i would stretch it too i need to be at work at seven depending on the on how many guests we had so lodge and how the, sh the kind of the kitchen works is based on how many guests you have so if you're having for example like we house max 25 so if I would have 25 guests, I have to be in the kitchen earlier. So sometimes I have to be in the kitchen at 6, sometimes I have to be in the kitchen at 5, sometimes I have to be the, I can get to the kitchen at 8 o'clock, you know, because there's not that many people there. So it's that kind of thing of, like, it's not really depending on how many guests we had, but typically if we had an alright amount of guests, maybe let's just say we had about, like, what, 15, okay, 15 is a lot in large terms, um, if we had about like 10 guests, I could wake up and just get to work at like 7.30, you know. 
so it would be that get there and do all the breakfast preps that I could do before the guests come notes in a lot well in that specific one let me not actually just um, say in the lodge because I think other lodges work differently, which is what I heard about the lodges that were around us. I had to do, you have to do breakfast, you have to do lunch, you have to do supper. So while you're doing breakfast, you're really thinking what you need to prep for lunch and all of that kind of stuff, which was also like, okay. Um, so I would get there, do breakfast preps. I worked with them, like it was two people who, who would work in the kitchen. Well, it's supposed to be three, but hey. Hey, life happened. So it was basically two people working in the kitchen, and if the other person was off, it was one person working in the kitchen. So it would be you getting there doing your preps, and then starting lunch preps, so to say, um, and also starting prep for like we had bread every single like we had to bake fresh bread every day. So also doing preps for the next day for breakfast, which was like hey, like I said, it's like what you know coming from getting to work like yeah yeah what's up what's going on hey so what are we doing today to kind of having to think like okay this whole day i have to ensure that all my hours are counted all my hours in a certain way you know that kind of thing so, so pretty much it was like that um and then breakfast would run till about half past 10 10 30 um we would then start prepping for lunch and then do all our lunch preps lunch was ugh, compulsory through salads I don't understand why, but compulsory three salads and whatever else that was needed, to, like that needed to be there. It was a lot. It was a lot of work to do. Okay, it was very like it was a lot of work. So that would happen. We will take orders for supper, do supper preps um, while lunch is running or after lunch. So I'll say I would rest maybe from like twelve to half past one. Do lunch depending on also how quickly I'm working, there's that too. How quickly I'm working or how much more I have to do because as much as I have to cook, I have to also deal with orders, I have to do all those different kind of things because we're getting different days, you order different things. You know, different supplies thingy um, deliver on different days. I, you need to make sure that you're there to receive your order when it comes, you need to pack your order, you need to check your order and all of that kind of stuff. So in a day, I wouldn't really have that much time to rest, I wouldn't really have that much time to myself, so to say. So, like I said, half past one, I mean, half, like 12 to half past one. On a not so busy day, it was perfect because if there were two days, listen, your preps are, you're breezing through preps because there's only two people. You know, you don't need to do like a whole lot. But in a time where there were so many people, it would be very difficult to kind of get time to just be like, okay, to who's that? To just kind of pull yourself to yourself, you know. So, lunch would run until about past three, four, because it started half past two. Well, yeah, it was half past two. So, so about half past three, four, everything would be back in the kitchen. Preps for dinner would start maybe to around, so, so, we sometimes we did preps for, for, for dinner during breakfast or it's like, it's insane, I know, but like would ha you'd have to kind of juggle everything together to kind of ensure that everything stays okay so that you can get time to rest. You used to work so like quickly in order to get time to rest and then luckily if you're done at five you can take a rest from like five if there's not many guests again you can come back at half past seven for eight and then if there's many guests then you have to at least be there at around like 6 30 for eight to ensure that all your preps are properly done and everything like that you know so that was pretty much a typical day in the lodge that that's how it was on a daily basis you know do I regret or do I regret the decision? Do I question that decision of going to work at a lodge? I don't. I think, if anything, I came out working 20,000 times faster. I came out being creative on my feet because you'd wake up tomorrow, there's a vegan. You'd wake up, we have two vegans, we have no lactose, you have no milk, no this, no. People were so complicated that I got to learn so many different ways to do things. I got to learn different um, eating eating habits, what are they called? Dietary requirements. Ha! I got to learn how to deal with very many different um, eating requirements and all of those kind of things. So do I regret anything on that decision? I don't. Um, it's just that the workload was a whole lot. Like the workload was way... I always say it, it's so like... What's the word? Exploit... Exploitative? Is exploitative a real word? But it was a, an environment that exploited um, somebody. 
like i'm just like no ways there's no ways no absolute way yes i know chefing is difficult yes i know chefing hours are long for sure like don't get me wrong don't think oh, this one is lazy no nothing like that but the amount of work that she did the, like it was the hours that she it's like 24 hours wasn't like not even 10, like the hours that she had were not enough like the hours that she had in a day were literally not enough to get all of that work done and then and also coupled with the fact that we were one man short in the kitchen you know so it was it was quite a lot it was very tough but it's an experience that i wouldn't exchange for the world waking up to fresh air waking up to animals waking up to just peace and just serenity and just you know like i highly enjoyed the outdoors and all of that kind of stuff so to me that was like an oasis it was like a paradise you know like a cute para para paradise on jk imagine a pajama so to me it was pretty much like an oasis it was just something that was just fantastic you know kitchen wise i think i wouldn't mind working in a kitchen like that because i think um it's, it's good um it pushes creativity sure and all of that kind of stuff but as long as you're able to balance out you don't want your people to burn out because you worked three weeks in a row one day off so three weeks every single seven days of three weeks 21 straight days of working those insane hours will take a toll on you eventually get back home for her like off days the first three days you just because you're tired you know you're so tired that in a blink of an eye you're going back to work you know so i think i understand yes villa lodge is a different they very very different they're not going to be how a hotel is but yo i think so much better could be done so much better okay could be done in that aspect in my personal experience okay let me not say lodges in general because i don't know how the rest of the lodges work but in my experience that would be you know a thing where structure structure that whole working our situation nicely you know i highly enjoyed being a head chef listen it's a thing of you get interactive guests you just Obviously, the level of responsibility between you and everybody else, like I said, you don't get that much time to rest as everybody else because you have 20,000 things that you need to get done in one day. You just, it's, it's, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. Um, you get to push creativity because you are the one who's coming to be like, okay, why can't you change one, two, three, four, five? Why can't you do this, this, and that? You know, you're coming to push creativity. You're coming to add new things. You have that, like, power, so to say. So, for me, that was also what was kind of fun because I was like, I can push my own personal creativity and yeah and just have a good time you know as, as a head chef learn so much like i learned like i said ordering and all of that is not easy having to order from different suppliers you need meats you need uh veg those are not the same people those are two different people people skills you get to talk to people interact with people and all of that kind of stuff so that was what for me was very very fantastic about working in the lodge but like i said it was something i was super never ready for how everything rolled out i was not not ready for anyway i think that that is my experience with the lodge. Listen, it's fun. I almost got eaten by animals a couple of times. I almost bumped into animals a couple of times. But would I trade that experience for anything? Absolutely not. Anyway, hmm. I think another thing with the lodge, right? Work environment. I think they, when they talk about that place, work environment is super important because in the lodge, you pretty much have to bump into the same people who might actually be causing you that same stress. It's, it's very, it's true go tricky you have a good tricky but anyway i think that is me done that is pretty much me done that's my experience as a hit as a as a large chef upsides would be good environment i mean good like living environment um and all of that kind of stuff i think for me like i was privileged to kind of not live with everybody else you know i lived in a cabin on my own and i didn't have to live with anybody else because i feel like if i had to live with other people probably i would have been borderline losing my mind because it was just a lot you know like i said separating your work and your personal life so yeah anyway i think that's me done Press like like i said upside a fantastic living environment fantastic opportunity to learn um great i think great first of all great on my resume as well you know like hey at this age i was this hey oh you know that kind of thing it's downside just not being able to separate your work in your personal life not what's this getting enough like rest as a person like you're literally a moving zombie 
moving zombie tendencies, you know, better working environment, you know. So yeah, that's pretty much that on that. Um, thank you guys for tuning in and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.